You are beautiful beyond description, too marvelous for words, too... <laughs> I don't remember, but it's something about majesty. I stand, I stand in awe of you. <laughs> I love that song. I love that song. It comes in in moments where I don't, I, I don't even know it's coming into my spirit. At 12 years of age, I learned it. And just one lyric, you know, um, reminds me that I do, I stand in awe of a God that is awesome, that is over me, that is taking care of me, and he's got it all. Looks like we're hitting some turbulence, okay? I might be a little topsy-turvy. It's the wind. The wind is so, it's so unique right now. It's still, you can hear me clearly because it's still, it's not competing, it's not noisy, but it's there there it makes me think of when Jesus said the Holy Spirit is like the wind hallelujah um, it's gentle it's gentle but you know that it has been there you sense its movement you sense its presence hallelujah good morning happy Thursday to you I am here so that we can track to the through the Psalms together through God's Word together because what do I tell you about God's Word? It changes us from the inside out. You will not look the same if you get this Word inside of you. So I am praying that you go along this journey with me through the Psalms, through raw stuff. These are poems and songs that mostly David, Solomon, and other psalmists, other songwriters wrote and poured out to God thousands of years ago, yet still relatable today. Okay? I was thinking that I was in Soriana. I don't know if you guys know what that is. Soriana is one of these big stores in Mexico. I think I was about five years old. I was with my cousin and my dad, and we're walking through this huge store. When you're small, everything looks a little bigger, a little bit, just maybe a little bit scarier, a little bit, you know, you're apprehensive. And it is your parents or the adults around you to kind of help you navigate through through that world as you're growing up. So we went, my dad, my mom always said, stay right by me, stay right by me. She was always, you know, adamant about that. And my dad goes and takes us and there we are walking down this, um, you know, uh, lots of aisles, people everywhere. And my cousin and I veer off, you know, we veer off the path where my dad was, was leading, where my dad was, you know, pushing that cart. And so we end up getting lost. We end up kind of trying to find our way through this store. And it took us about 10 minutes to get back to my dad who was not worried at all. He had not even been looking for us. He um, did not even notice that we were gone, I think. But he just said, there you are. You know, he, he just said, you know, grab that. And just very casual, like no big deal. And we were a little, you know, a little distraught about it. But he was fine. He knew that we would make our way back to him. He knew that we were capable of finding him in that big store. And I think about our Father, our Heavenly Father, and how He made a way for us. He did everything to make sure that we could find our way back to Him. And He, he does that. He gives us everything that we need. All the love, all the forgiveness is already there. He really desires for us to make our way back to Him. But He's not going to do it by force. He's not going to force you into loving him, into seeking him. You have to be there at that place and he is ready for you to come home. He is looking out that porch and going, there's my son, there's my daughter. And he goes and he gets a robe and a ring. He desires that we come to him. That is the God that created us. That is the God that loves us. A father that desires we make our way back to him and he knows though we are lost though it may be chaotic though it may look like the situation is too big and too hard he knows no you're gonna make your way back to me i've i've like left all these breadcrumbs to tell you that i love you and to show you where i am 
And so I believe that that's what the Lord is saying today. Let's go into Psalms 32. I am Gio and this is Unraveled Hearts Ministries and I am praying that you're with me even through the shakes and the bumps. Oh my goodness, I need duct tape y'all. That's what I need. Duct tape solves everything. <laughs> okay, so I, I don't have that right now. So my, my tripod's a little wobbly wobbly, it's okay. It's okay. We're going to make it. We're going to make it after all. Chapter 32. Get your Bible. Let's read it together. Okay. It is God's word going out. God is still speaking audibly because this is his word. And we are speaking it. Hallelujah. Okay. Psalm 32. A Psalm of David. Oh, what joy for those whose disobedience is forgiven whose sin is put out of sight. Yes, what joy for those whose record the Lord has cleared of guilt, whose lives are lived with complete honesty. When, when I refuse to confess my sin, my body is wasted away and I groaned all day long. Day and night, your hand of discipline was heavy on me. My strength evaporated like water in the summer heat. Finally, I confessed all my sins to you and stopped trying to hide my guilt. And I said to myself, I will confess my rebellion to the Lord and you forgave me. All my guilt is gone. Therefore, let all the godly pray pray to you while there is still time that they may not be thrown in the flood waters of judgment for you are my hiding place for you protect me from trouble you surround me with songs of victory the lord says i will guide you along the best pathway for your life i will advise you i will watch over you do not be like a senseless horse or a mule that needs a bit or a bridle to keep it under control. Many sorrows come to the wicked, but unfailing love surrounds us who trust the Lord. So rejoice in the Lord and be glad. All you who obey him, shout for joy all whose hearts are pure. Hallelujah. Is your heart pure today? Is your heart pure? Look at this. David is explaining, is explaining this, this um, state of sin, the state of sin that he was in. But he can, might as well be describing all of us. At one point, this was us. We were in darkness. We were in sin. We were captive to lies. And it was, it was terrible. It was a terrible place to, to be. But when you come out of that, when you decide, that you no longer want to live there. You no longer want to stay in that mess, in that trap, in that darkness, in that sin. That you just have to confess. You just have to call his name. And he is ready. He cleanses us. Oh, what joy it is to be forgiven. What joy it is to be in his presence. And the enemy will lie to you and say, man, the things that you've done or, or hold you back and say, no, this is not. And, and maybe some of us, it's, it's things that are happening right now and you've got, you've got some bitterness inside your heart. You're noticing that there's things inside your heart that need to be set at the foot of the cross. They may not be full blown major what we can describe as major sin sin is sin pain is pain darkness is darkness light can dispel it so come into the light right now you don't have to be held back you don't have to feel misery or pain no come into Jesus I'm not saying that that will be easy I'm saying that now it is just simple it's simple to come to God but yeah, life will be hard and things will still come at you. But you have a God that never leaves you, never forsakes you. He's the God that is waiting for you just to come, to come. He knows that you will make your way back to him. He's ensuring, even by putting this messed up Texas girl, he wrecked my world so that I could be in front of you telling you that God loves you. He adores you. He created you with a purpose and a mission. He made a way that you would find him, that you would find it. Maybe you're not in a chaotic store, but hey, you're in a place where you feel lost. Come to the Father. Come to the Father. He's already provided a way. 
He's waiting for you with open arms. And he will not, just like my dad, he say, where have you been? What were you doing? <laughs> Why didn't you stay by me? No. He says, oh, there you are. There you are. I've been waiting for you all along. Come here, my daughter, my son. Man, he's a good God. He is. Know that Jesus paid a price you could not pay. He shed his blood for you which covers every sin. His blood is beautiful. His blood cleanses and makes us holy. He gives us a new heart, a heart of flesh that beats at the rhythm of God. He fills us up with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit leads us. He becomes our best friend. He guides us. He speaks to us. He helps us understand this word. Oh man, you're stepping into a supernatural life, an amazing life that you were always meant to live. I pray that you make Jesus the Lord of your life. Well, it is still called today. Oh, man. I love you. I hope you have a great day. Happy Thursday.